I think part of the issue when you hear the term lab is you automatically think a laboratory. And it's really important, I think, to differentiate between what you expect from an introductory student versus what you expect from a high-level student. Particularly in something like physics, uh, yes, I don't have access to a room full of lab equipment, but I have access to the entire outdoors. Uh, to give you an example, one of the modules of physics is basic motion. I can just as easily go outside and have somebody throw a ball up in the air and count how long it takes to come down, or to build a homemade ramp and have them roll it, an item down. And this gives a freedom of creation and interaction for the students where each student experience is unique. The one caveat to that is that as the instructor you have to then take unique experiments and figure out on your own are their results calculated right. So it does take a little more effort on that end. Now when you start looking at upper level stuff or even s there are certain experiments that I could not replicate easily. In some cases there are websites out there that recreate it for you. There's websites that will do gas pressure where you can adjust variables, um, different visual spectrums for atoms, but you can also look at what's available versus lab kits. There are lab kits that are very inexpensive out there that are available for biology. Uh, they come with a frog for you to dissect and things like that. Chemistry, they come with some simple chemicals and a warning that, you know, put down a plastic sheet before you start this. So there are a lot of resources in that mid-range and when you get to the high range there's now companies that will essentially sell you lab time. So you have a state-of-the-art lab space which might even be better than what you would expect to have in your average college lab and you just tell them what experiments you want to do and as the student you tell them okay here's what I want you to do and they will do it and they will videotape the results for you. So there's a lot out there if you're willing to break that mindset that doing a laboratory literally means a student sitting in a lab. So when we're talking about grading in science, uh, the nice part is in both science and mathematics is there's usually a right answer. There's mathematics behind it or known evidence. So there's nothing subjective about it, which does mean a certain amount of the work that you're grading can be automated. Uh, you can build it into mastery quizzes and stuff like that. But as I said, when you get into labs, it becomes more difficult because each lab is individual to the students. So what I would do is actually go through the lab work, grade it, but then return it to the student saying just this answer is wrong. If you can explain how it is wrong, I will give you partial credit on it. And then once the deadline for the second turn in was made, I would just publish it out with my results. I would say, here are the numbers I'm taking and using, here's the results that I got, so you can follow my process, plus whatever notes I left you on your exam saying, no, this is what the right answer should be.